Hello, this is Paul from G-Shocker. Today we're going to look at how to replace a standard TN uh, LCD, which is twisted pneumatic, with a STN super twisted pneumatic display uh, found in higher end models such as the GMWB5000. Um, as you can see, and as you will probably know if you've um, had these negative displays before, the standard displays aren't much good at all. Display. You know, in some lights, uh, as the light catches it, these can look decent, but equally they can look shockingly bad in many lights. So I'm going to give this a crack, not much to lose. The risks are minimal, really. Worst case scenario, I can just put the original display back in. Um, best case scenario, end up with a watch that I can actually see most of the time rather than just some of the time. Okay, so you're going to need a Phillips screwdriver, um, PH00. Probably some tweezers, some litter, these. And of course, you're going to need your new LCD display. So, so first things first, we want to get the back plate off of this bad boy. There we go, just set the screws aside. Take off the back plate and again the on this one now right now the gasket has come off with the back plate which is absolutely fine just set those aside for later this little seal again place it to one side in fact there's two parts to that there's the gray part and there is this part try and place things in the order in which you take them out just makes it easy to remember where everything goes and then from there you can just pop out the module um, take your case and try and store it like this so that you don't end up with um, dust inside of the case And now we have our module. Let's zoom in a little. You've got two screws here, uh, screws, two springs here, which are um, part of the um, tough solar system. So these two springs touch the front of the case um, and lead down into the board. So as you open this up, and as we open up in a minute, You've got one, two, three, four, five, six clips that we need to take off. You've got these two springs here and inside, I think we're going to find that there are going to be probably four um, even smaller springs for the LED and they're very easy to lose. They're very easy to ping across the room. So be super careful and mindful when taking this apart so if, in fact before we start we want to um, want to release the battery I'm going to need some kind of tweezers with a point just release the battery like so front one two Three, four, five, and with the six, just be careful the whole module doesn't blow open. So just turn it upside down and gently lift the metal case away. Again, set it aside in the order in which you're taking everything apart. This now can also be lifted along with the board itself. You'll see there's a, a white reflector on there. So again, just set these aside. 
and now you'll notice we've got these two rubber strips that connect to the board for the LCD and we have this layer here gently there we go you see the spring has already popped out of place if I this off and again keep it in the order in which you take them off so we know one spring gently so you notice on this as well these rubber strips won't necessarily fall out of place you have to kind of remove them and now we can lift this away just keep an eye on those bloody springs and you'll notice that the LED has just fallen out as well so this amber one um, actually sits backwards basically the opposite direction of the main white LED so let's just take these tiny little springs oh my god I hate them absolutely hate them there's two there and then that's a total of four so that's it for this this now can be set aside you can either remove these including the um, these two springs but personally I don't see any point I'm just going to replace this LED and then sit the new LCD in place so this particular one has to be facing in this direction see how tiny it is the new LCD I don't know if you can see this on the camera but there's effectively a little red dot much easier to see on a positive display but this negative the red dot's quite difficult to see but there's a red dot and the reason that red dot is there is because there is a thin um, removable kind of clear layer that we remove right at the end um, a lot of people don't realize that these layers come off and they end up removing the dot with a bit of alcohol but ultimately this layer itself is removable and we'll leave it on right for the end so we're going to sit this in place. Should literally slot right in where the old one sat. So this is the way around that we're going to want our, I don't know what you'd call this, but this layer we want this way around. Um, as you can see, two holes, two holes for the springs to in touch in the LEDs and then we've got the smaller gap here for the top rubber strip that connects to the screen so just gently place that in place and we can take our rubber strips Lock that in like so. Right then, many, many, many minutes later, we have all four springs in. Um, they've been pinging across the room. One thing I would advise is applying some pressure to this plate just gently as you're putting the springs in. But as you lift your finger away, just use something plastic to hold it down as you pull your finger away because often as your finger sits there for you know a minute or so trying to get one of the springs in as you lift your finger it can lift the plate and all of the springs that have successfully gone in can be pinged out which has happened to me a couple of times so just be mindful of that so now we're not home dry yet because we need to get this back in place this is the reflector that's just fallen off of the board just position that in like so board and as you'll notice there are these two strips for the LCD they just sit face down and ultimately right now our goal 
is to get all of this back on. Do you know, I might even push the battery down on there. Basically get all of this back on. Just gonna make sure that the short strip matches up with the short strip. And we wanna get this back on without somehow letting any of these springs ping out and trust me, it happens. So just set that aside one second, very, very slowly and gently pick this up. We wanna hold this sort of in place and then sit this over the top, I'll let anything ping, I'll let anything fall out of place, and then whatever you do, don't touch the LCD underneath, otherwise it will force everything up and it will all pop out of place. There is so much opportunity for failure at this point. Just gently pinch all six of those latches in place. Oh my goodness, have I got them all? And once you've got those six in place, it's safe then to turn it over. And there we have it, our module fully attached. And you'll see that at the moment the screen is off and that is usually one of two things. Either we need to do an AC reset or it might simply be that the screen just needs a little bit of charge to initiate it um, and we can do that by putting it back into the case in a minute but before that we will do a, an AC reset. It says here that um, to start the watch perform an AC reset then shed light onto the glass for a while. So AC reset is here, this little gold and the negative is there. So you need some long nose tweezers or a paper clip or something along those lines and we just want to touch this with this. I should have done the trick. And then once this is back in, we can shine some light and all should be good. But before we do that, we just need to remove this film. Oh, how satisfying. And then quickly pop this back in to the case before any dust gets on the screen or inside of the case. And there is that back into place. The rubber strip this way so that that houses this white area. We need our gasket, which you want to make sure it's seated in perfectly. If it's an older watch, you probably want to 
oil the gasket as it helps retain the water resistance. This is a brand new watch and this gasket is already greasy enough. I'd just be adding grease onto grease and it wouldn't make the remotest bit of difference if I were to add additional now. You just want to make sure that that is seated in there all the way around. Pop the back plate on. When you're putting these screws back in, start with one corner and just put it in maybe 50% of the way. Go to the opposite corner. Same again, and it just prevents, or it allows for the back plate to sit on properly. Once you've got all four in, then you can tighten each of the screws, and all should be good. Should be good. And here we have it, the TN display on the left and the STN display on the right. Um, the video doesn't quite do it just because the lighting in here is pretty good and it's the minute that the lighting isn't ideal that the TN display really um, becomes a problem, whereas the STN in pretty much any light is fine to read. It's not, in my view, quite as good as a um, MIP display, but it's a damn sight better than the regular TN displays. So that's it. Any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. If you give this a go yourself, good luck, and please do post back with the results. Thanks for watching. This has been G-Shocker. Until next time.